congratulations on this wonderful film. Oh my word. And I just discovered, Dennis, that it is the biggest budget indigenous film ever made in Canada. Congratulations. With the support of two rival networks in Canada and Taika and, and New Zealand government. Wow. It, it tells me that there was such a willingness and need to, to have these stories come out. Um, was it a tough go or was it pretty easy to get all that together? Oh my God, no, it was not easy at all. <laughs> um, I mean, there were elements of it that like, I think we came about at a right moment, but it was a moment that um, came about because of decades of political advocacy. So it, it didn't just happen overnight or like, wow, we brought all of these incredible things together. And even the vision for an international Indigenous co-production was something that, I mean, I remember way back in the early 2000s um, that the NSI sent um, Indigenous filmmakers down to Australia and New Zealand to try to, you know, promote international collaboration. So a lot of people had been holding a vision for, for projects of a certain scale for many years. And I think we came about at the moment when, you know, that push had come kind of to a head. And just the year before, Jeff Barnaby um, made Blood Quantum. And at that time, his was the largest budget film ever made with an Indigenous person at the helm. And so um, there were two examples of films getting a decent scale, um, which was something that, that, again, the community had been fighting for. So, um, you know, when these things were all brought together, and it took you know, stages um, for that to happen. It was just really amazing. Um, and it was amazing to see so much industry support get behind it. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it all sort of coalesced in, in, a, in the right moment. More will come. Who lives here? The city went dark after the war. No one can see your face, no one. Is that a child? No, oh, no, it's okay. See, I was beginning to believe that my boy was the only free one left. Elmaya, your character uh, lives in the bush with her daughter to protect her so that she's not kidnapped and sent away to the academy, another word for residential school. Um, and she's not even safe in the bush because of the preponderance of drones in the sky. So your character lives with incredible anxiety and fear, but she finds bravery in herself. So was it pretty exhausting? <laughs> These emotional highs and lows? Um, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was tough, but I have to say that um, there was so much support provided on set to create a space where, um, where I was able to make brave choices and feel like I could go to places um, that that were tough to go to. Um, that being said, it was such a wonderful experience. Um, I was just like overjoyed to go to work every day because um, this the script was like nothing I'd ever read before and working with Danis was a dream. Um, and the entire cast and crew was just so wonderful. There were so many indigenous people on set. And so there was like a ton of laughter and joy every day. Um, and there was also cultural and spiritual support that was provided um, in, in a way that felt very nurturing and, and safe. Um, and so every day was tough in terms of going to those emotional places. Um, and it was also just a, a massive um, responsibility um, to, to do justice to this story because Niska represents so many Indigenous women I know, um, especially single mothers who are doing so much with so little and have faced so much adversity in their lives. Um, and so I wanted to do those women's stories justice um, because I think they, they're, they're superheroes. The things that they do every day are incredible um, and, and um, they're often overlooked. And so, yeah, it was a, a massive responsibility and, and I didn't take it lightly by any means. Um, and you, you said, you know, they're, they're superheroes, these single mothers trying to do so much with nothing. Um, in fact, Niska kind of rises to a level of almost mythological presence because she becomes a protector and a warrior 
which was the most wonderful thing. Please! You have a child at the academy? She was taken in the fall. <laughs> and Dennis, how did, how, was she, was that character as the protector and warrior, was that the, the seed for the story? Um, I think what the story um, to me always circled around was, you know, it definitely is about, you know, um, resistance and the fight um, and also just about pure perseverance. But to me, the core of the story always just focused on love, you know, the love right. between the mother and the daughter and then also coming into your community um, and the love that is there um, because even the fight um, and you know the idea of being a warrior fight always comes from a place of love it comes from the love of our communities and our families and our nations and so to me that that was always at the core of the story. Elmaya it was great to see and Dan it's great to see Violet in the film. <laughs> And in a big role, that was, oh, I loved it. We, we didn't get to speak to her during, during the um, uh, publicity event uh, a couple of years ago. And to hear her speak so forthrightly and so powerfully, that was just great. So I was so pleased that she, that she was in the film. Um, Violet, I just want to jump in because Violet is absolutely radiant. And yeah. um, speaking of the warrior um, that, that you referenced, mm -hmm. um, you know, in our communities, leaders look like many different ways. And where I come from, you know, um, often people are shy, but they rise to the occasion in unexpected ways. And Violet's character is like the embodiment of a very beautiful kind of leadership that we rarely get to see on screen. And she's just absolutely um, radiant on screen. I just love what she did. And uh, she's such an exciting talent. The Academy want to start the war again and now force our kids onto the front lines of it. I want to find her again on the other side. The world that you create is, um, is dystopian. Um, it looks familiar in ways that reminds us of the of uh, social wreckage and and the pandemic and all you know all kinds of things that are happening in our society um, did the pandemic add any nuance to the script absolutely i mean I, we were already done shooting um, when the pandemic began but there is an element in the film of a disease um, that, uh, that comes comes about a virus. And uh, it was really crazy to watch the film post, you know, now we're in the COVID world, in the pandemic world. So to see those scenes, I mean, they just took on a totally different meaning um, to rewatch them now. Yes. Ladies, thank you so much. Congratulations. This is such a powerful film and I can't wait for people to see it. Thank you. As long as we have one piece of land, they will always come for us. Is it too late? No, but we have to go now. We pledge our hearts and give our allegiance to our glorious republic and solemnly swear to protect it. One country. Get down!